Hey there, church. How are you today? Hope this finds you doing well. A beautiful day. We got my green on because today, the day I'm recording this, it's St. Patrick's Day. So I don't want to get pinched or flinched or whatever they do to people who don't wear green. Um, so today I want to talk about questions about the rapture. Just had someone ask me the other day, a good friend of mine, wanted to know about uh, whether or not I was pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post-tribulation, rapture and um and he began expressing his opinion about that and uh and i thought well you know that's uh, probably something other folks are interested in so we'll talk about that on the questions podcast i don't really have a whole lot to say about it honestly i'll tell you what i told him but first let's as in all things let's go to the word of god today and we find this idea of rapture that is the church being captured up into heaven in 1st Thessalonians chapter 4. This is really a beautiful passage. It's great uh, to be read at funerals on the sickbed of a dying saint. This is a this is a wonderful comfort. So Paul writing to the Thessalonian church says there in chapter 4 of his first letter, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So this is the telling about the future coming of Christ to take his church to heaven. He's, he's bringing the bride together. So the bride of Christ that's at that time on the earth will be caught up into the clouds, but not before all the dead in Christ. The bodies of the dead in Christ are raised from their graves and meet the Lord in the air as well. So they're going to go first. The dead in Christ will rise first. And then the remainder of the church that has not died yet at that time will go on to be with the Lord in the air. And so we shall ever be with the Lord. Now, the rapture, when does it happen? And this is the thing that everybody wants to know. Well, at least it used to be. I'll say that. And the gentleman who asked me this question was was in my age group. And uh, it used to be that this was a, a point of contention, a point of doctrinal contention. But today, people could care less about doctrine. You know, they, they there there's not much being taught doctrinally in a, any longer. Well, in a few places there are, but but there used to be an, uh, an issue because there were some groups who were very fundamental who made this a point of contention and a point of fellowship. So if you were not pre-trib or if you were not mid-trib or, or post-tribulation rapture, then you couldn't fellowship with them. They would exclude you from their, their fellowship. You know, you, you weren't Christian enough, I guess. That's where this really becomes a problem. Because the question is, when does the rapture occur in relationship to the tribulation? We know it happens, well, I believe it happens prior to the tribulation, because the rapture is the end of the church age. And I won't go into all of, all of that because I've already done a series uh, in the Bible Bistro University on the dispensations, the first three dispensations that are in the book of Genesis, the generations of creation, the generations of Adam, the generations of Noah, and then we move into the generations of Terah, which become the period of the patriarchs. But at the end of each one of those dispensations, we have a cataclysmic event occurring. So in, um, in the garden, Adam is driven out and the, the angel is put at the gate. Uh, in Noah's time, it was the flood. That ended the generations of Adam, or at least that dispensation. Then we have the generations of Terah, or the generations of Noah are in, 
end with the fall of Babel. And then we have the beginning of the generations of Terah, in which we have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and so we have the period of the patriarchs. But each one of these events, creation ends with the, ends with the um, ex expulsion from the garden. Uh, Adam's generation, or the pre-flood generation, ends with the flood. Noah's generation ends with the Tower of Babel. And then we come to the patriarchal period, and that dispensation ends with the Exodus. So all of these dispensations end with some sort of a cataclysmic event. And so the church age, which is the dispensation in which we live now, will end when the Lord Jesus comes and receives the church unto himself, just as we have here in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So this is the event that will take place. And then the world moves into the tribulation, and all the events that happen in the tribulation happen. I believe that it's pre-trib, that is, that it's before the tribulation, because in the book of Revelation, after the letters are written to all the churches, you then see in chapter 4, 5, 6, and all the way through the book of Revelation, you see the church gathered at the throne. As a matter of fact, you can read the entire book of Revelation and just look for the throne events. The throne events in the book of Revelation are like markers. They nicely divide the book up until you come to chapter 20 and you have the great white throne and then we enter into the new Jerusalem and the new the new heavens and the new earth are created. So I believe that the uh, I believe the rapture comes before the tribulation, but as I said the danger is is when we we make this a point of contention or fellowship and we make it a, a primary source of doctrine. We say that, you know, you can't be saved unless you believe that it's a pre-trib or a mid-trib or a post-trib uh, rapture. You can't fellowship with our church. You can't be a member of our congregation and so forth. Folks, that is, that is so dangerous. And what it leads to, it leads to date setting. That's exactly what it leads to. And then people begin to set dates and they say, well, I believe that... Jesus is going to come back at this time. And they have all these reasons. They've scouted out all the sources in the Bible, and they've got it all figured out. All the mysteries now are made clear, and they know exactly when Jesus is going to return. Of course, ignoring the fact that Jesus told us that no one, even he, doesn't know when he will come back. They can't set a date, and yet people do. And they've been setting dates since... Well, since Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians about the rapture of the church, men have been setting dates since then, trying to figure out when it's all going to come to a close. And then they'll set a date, and they'll gather around a bunch of disciples to themselves, and they'll go out on a hillside and wait, or whatever they're going to do, you know. And just, you can look at the most recent history of that with groups like the Seventh-day Adventists. You know, they were believing that the coming of Christ was going to be a thing that they were going to see. They set dates. He never never happened, of course, because no one knows. And then they're embarrassed. And there are all kinds of groups that have done that down through the history, and there will still be people who do that. Let me just warn you against it. When you begin to say that this issue is so important that we have to, you know, uh, form our little group around it, you know, make this a... Make this a confession of the church. You believe and agree with us on this point. If you're in a group like that, watch out, because some man's going to rise up within that group and say, hey, I, I know exactly when the Lord's coming back, and, uh, and here's the date. So be careful of that. This leads to all form of, of ill doctrine. As I said, you know, people are... People are not uh, inclined to even learn doctrine today, the things that the Bible teaches. Uh, but it'll come, it'll come around again, and it'll be a popular thing, because it just does. It cycles through the church. Don't know why it does. Uh, the, devil, the devil likes to use this to confuse us, I think. So that's what I have to say about the rapture of the church. I believe that it's a pre-tribulation rapture. But brother or sister, if you believe it's mid-trib or you believe it's post-trib, if you think the church is going to go through the, the tribulation period, you and I can still fellowship together. Now, you're wrong, and if you want to be right, you can agree with me, of course. But, you know, 
this is not a point of fellowship. It really is not. So let's not do that to one another, especially on something this wonderful. When we think about the Lord descending from the heavens and the shout and the archangel and the trump and all the rest, my goodness, and then the graves opening up and people rising up to meet the Lord in the air, the resurrected bodies of the saints that have gone before, and then we get to do that, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thought. You know, I was just thinking about um, Psalm 37, and and uh, in there, the you know, one of the precepts in Psalm 37 is to delight yourself in the Lord. And that's one of the things that we should do when we think about the rapture is allow that to delight us, to allow that to be something that we use to delight in the Lord because it's a delightful thought that he's going to come and he's going to take us home. That's good. Don't know when. You know, if it was today, it'd be a good day for it, but it could be tomorrow. It could be 2,000 years from today. Who knows? Who knows? So that uh, just wanted to, you know, touch on the questions about the rapture and, and where I stand on it just so we can have a little bit of a discussion about it. It's a wonderful devotional thought. And let me just repeat what Paul says at the end of that fourth chapter when he says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So go comfort yourself with this thought. He's coming again. It may be soon. God bless you guys. Love you, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.